ABC. It's uh, Dean from the UK to shoot a recent finds video as all my latest purchases and goodies I've had. Um, first video in a while, so I'd just like to say hello to everyone um, and show you what I recently acquired. Oh, bloody hell. I'm all going to pop. Right, so let's kick it off. Um, anybody who watches my videos recently, you know, I've been on a bit of a Mark um, uh, Lanigan kick um, with Screaming Trees, um, his own work, um, and his work with Isabel Campbell, things like that. Um, so, and I think I've pretty much bought out most of the CDs that he's done with Isabel Campbell. And, Isabel Campbell's own work to go on from that. Oh, anyway. Well, basically, this is a new album. Um, imitations. And, um, I mean, this is his third album quite recently. I think he's had Blues Funeral, um, and he did a collaboration um, with Duke Girl. Um, uh, Black Pudding was the name of the album, a quirky name for an album. But um, yeah, I've um, just got a thing from the minute. His voice is just it's so good; it gets me, gets me um, every time. Really deep, gravelly voice. So the Mark Lanigan fix carries on. Um, next, uh, why don't it is. Um, this, which is um, Ben Nichols, um, Last Pale Light in the West. Um, well, ben Nichols, um, I don't know if anyone knows him as an individual artist, but um, I literally got this um, from um, The Walking Dead, basically. Um, the last um, episode of The Walking Dead that's been on, um, shown in the UK last night, yeah, showed in the UK last night, and obviously in uh, America on Sunday evening. Um, this um, album featured heavily at the um, start of the episode. Uh, if anybody watches it, it's basically where the governor's wandering. Um, around after he gets um, deserted by the two people that are with him and he finds um, a family. So this is not the last episode, this is the episode four, sorry. This has been another one since then. Um, but uh, yeah, Last Pale Light in the West, I just listened to it a lot, it's fantastic. It's acoustic, sort of country kind of um, song. Um, and again, the guy's voice, I, I don't know what it is about uh, people with like husky uh, gravelly voices, not an attraction or anything, so don't want that. Um, but, um, you know, I think it does add a little something to it. I do like that kind of, um, that kind of uh, music. And um, basically, it's uh, the guy himself is from a band called uh, it's a Lucera, I think it's Lucera, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but L U C. E R O, and it's like a country. Oh, I think they describe as I describe it as like a country kind of punk um, kind of thing. Um, so just start getting into that. Um, we'll check out some of the band that he was in because um, quite good stuff. Um, well, let me keep out of order. Um, I know I've said this arrived the other day, but not shown it in a video. Um, Beatles on a live at the BBC Volume Two. Um, obviously, Volume One and Volume Two are both coming out. Um, I think Volume Two has just hit shops and the stores quicker, even though it has I think a similar release date. Um, I've got the first one on order, just not come through yet. So I mean, I had a chance to listen to it. Yeah, it's been work's been money. Um, I work in retail, so. <clears throat> your shift patterns are all over the place, we do early to late, so at the minute 
um, well, the other day. I finished at nine. I got home about ten o'clock. Seven, well, quarter to seven the next morning. I was waking up, ready to go to work again. And at nine o'clock we opened. So you know, it's like um, twelve hours from finishing to starting. You're literally coming home, going to sleep, and. Well, that's retail for you. Any products in retail will know. Um, this next lot is basically um, I've got these from the guy who um, had a shop who was near me. Again, all just picked up this morning, so I just need to show them off. I'm going to have a listen to them as soon as I've finished. But um, um, show this first one. This is um, a Black Friday release. It's basically Rush the Garden, um, and it's um, a studio and a live version of the track from um, the Clockwork Angel and the Clockwork Angel tour. So. Um, it rode on the records, doesn't say anything about it being limited or anything, but I can't imagine there's going to be a lot of them, which has been a sort of a Black Friday release, record store day um, bit. Um, I did see uh, another um, thing that had a record store day release, but I've not picked it up. Um, tell you why. Basically, this is, um, as a lot of people most probably know, um, the Queens of the Stone Age uh, most recent album. Um, Clockwork, well, like Clockwork. There's been, I think it's about three versions now, four versions of this album. There's a basic version, um, there's a basic version of 140 gram with additional material. And then there's this one, which is the 180 gram, and it's got the artwork booklet and everything. And now there is a, um, a black version um, for Black Friday. So it's basically a black background, it's embossed, so you can see the you can see the faces. Um, and essentially, it's the same as the um, the version below this. I can't remember if it's red or blue cover, but I um, thought about it because it's only it's at two and a half thousand, um, or oh no, two thousand four hundred copies um, have been pressed. Uh, I think twelve hundred for America and twelve hundred for the rest of the world. So if it's still around in a month, so I might pick up a copy just because um, shit like that. Um, I know in the VC there's been a lot of, um, um, especially on Facebook, um, a lot of talk about um, um, Fuzz, um, which is a, it's three childhood friends or college of friends, and one of them is um, Ty Seagal, who's obviously had an extended um, career of his own and um, I think it was Michael Mayer who sort of originally I suppose put me on to them he showed a picture uh, or a link to a share of the Fuzz um, album box set and it was like an um, embossed um, like a nice um, not suede you know like a fuzzy kind of thing with um, gold or silver um, emblem on it and the artwork on the front is fantastic but this box set was fine oh, as and by the time I even realised it was on pre-order it was gone so um, not going to get hold of that but I will get hold of the normal album um, but I decided to have a listen to some of his back catalog and started off with my um, first uh, Thai Seagal album and this is a uh, sleeper so it's quite nice um, colourful artwork. I've got some more on order. Um, so let's wait for them to come through. Hopefully expand on that. 
I think this um, next one, Jesse James um, showed it or mentioned it, and have been listening to it a lot on um, Spotify. Most probably one of my favourite soundtracks of late. Um, I would love Tron Legacy if I could get it, but that ain't happening um, because that's uh, stupid expensive. But um, Drive, um, and this is the pink, so double pink LP. Um, the guy I got it from had the picture disc and the pink, so I was thinking of sound um, quality most probably over everything. Um, so I went for the pink version. Um, but anybody that's not listening to this soundtrack, it's amazing. Um, sort of electro pop, I suppose, kind of thing. But you know, it's just nice and um, easy going. And uh, I think every track on it is, uh, is is pretty good, in my opinion. So um, just had to get this and had a bit of extra cash to to go with. So I thought that's the one thing I'd pick up. Another thing, uh, Django Unchained soundtrack, but I've got to get this. Um, anybody who's watched the film, I mean, some people think it's good, some people think it's shit. Um, I particularly thought it was quite good. Um, you know, typical film for what it was and who made it, but I um, did think the soundtrack was good, so decided I'd to pick this up, ask the guy if he'd still got it. And um, he said yes, so I think it was his last copy, so I was really happy to get hold of that. Um, what have we got? Okay, so back to my um, Beatles. I'm a big Beatles kick as well at the minute, so and this is quite new, so if anybody's got this, I'd be, uh, be surprised, or they've just added it to their collection. Um, the Beatles, I saw her standing there. Um, and it's um, I don't know if it was a bootleg, but it's basically um, from what the guy told me. Um, so you've got two LPs, um, and it's got think of things like um, uh, Decca, and what's it demos from the Decca time and things like that. Uh, but because they're so old, the license of the music has lapsed, so people can start doing. Um, uh, records and everything, so that's why you get a lot of um, Beatle bootlegs and uh, Zeppelin and, and all that kind of thing. Is they all the music becomes available to, to literally anybody to to um, I suppose press. Um, but it's done with um, Rock Melon Music Limited. So, but um, the guy got it obviously. He's meant to say that it's. Um, um, it's uh, it's going to be pretty good quality. So, but um, there's things like uh, alternative versions of different things. So um, there's like one after 909, and then there's a one after 909 uh, alternative uh, version. Um, catwalks and catwalks alternative. Uh, Love me do first version they did, um, and and things like that. You see, so. Um, and there's some live tracks and, and things like that so um, in different places so like um, this is a, um, Teenage Turn which was basically in 1962 um, track Teenage Turn yeah so um, yeah so I do justice but uh, this should be a good listen um, I think after the drive um, album. This is most probably going to be the first on my um, my turntable. So really happy with that. Um, nearly picked up some um, bootlegs. Um, there's three or four uh, different albums, um, remasters and things like that. Uh, decided to leave them because I wanted these other things. Uh, it would have cost me about sixty quid for the four. But I thought, oh, sorry, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to go there. I can't, um, you know, you can spend money that you've not got, or spend money that's earmarked for other things. Um, I spent a hell of a lot of money on a new stereo recently, so um, my turntable is my new turntable that I've had recently. A lot of people seen, 
and my room tour, um, my amplifier and my speakers have since changed. Um, so I will be doing a new room tour again shortly. Um, just got to have a change in my room around. So hopefully that will happen before Christmas. It's sometime mid-December most probably when I've got uh, a few days off back to back. And um, this is one thing, another thing I picked up that I got off um, a, um, a fellow VC member, well not this, but the, the Cramps as a band. Um, you know, I started to have a look around and this is a, um, it's an unofficial, um, so it's an unofficial, so it's a bootleg. It's on, um, basically, so Rare Tracks, a demo rehearsal B-side. Um, soundtrack and it's um, basically double LP um, I think it's on coloured vinyl as well and it's um, um, yeah, basically it's like rarities and things like that so I thought um, so I'm getting into it I thought I'd uh, get something like this as, um, as like a collector's piece or something like that so you know that was nice and um, so but it's uh, next one is still in its box. I did ask him to keep one of these for me as soon as it come out. And finally got round to, to picking it up. So I'm sure a lot of people, some people most probably got this. Um, you know, Dino Vinyl Times, Will at uh, Mod Central, things like that, uh, will most probably appreciate this quite a bit. But um, basically. You know me and my box set, so this is the um, Flash box set. So, five studio album LP set, um, L so it's eight LPs all in all. Um, and, uh, I mean, you know, a lot of people love to some artists. If you, um, if it's, in my opinion, there's a good box set and there's a bad box set. You've got one, say, a good box set, which is one album nothing special about it and you know they, they spread it over four LPs or something like that and you know they'll try and charge you 70 quid for it or something and, you know that's not it's no, I don't think that's very good um you know if it's got something else to it fair enough you know like different recordings of it um alternate things live versions and things like that um with something like this things like the, the Who box set and the Sabbath box set which I both got you can get a complete studio set and it's um, when you total up the amount of records that are in there the price of it is it, it's phenomenal really I mean you know a lot there's a lot of overpriced box sets out there I mean I think this was about it's high 70s that's something like that so you think you're getting eight LPs in there fair enough it's five studio albums but it's eight LPs you're paying less than Ten pounds, um, or about ten pounds a record, you know, which in this day and age is pretty good. But you get the box set, and you get any extras that come with it. So, you know, I I buy box sets on that. I mean, a lot of people that have seen any of my videos, um, I'm a magpie. I do love box sets. I do love coloured vinyl, um, like Tim um, in America. He's a, you know, I. I'll freely admit that I will buy something if it looks nice, um, you know, maybe another like the music or something, but I will, you know, if it's coloured, it's limited, it's um, a special sleeve, it's a box set, um, all those kind of things numbered, uh, you know, I, I would say as I do love music, but I'm a collector as well, and I do like things like that, so, um, I, you know, shiny magpie, I think most probably described me when I first started making videos and there's nothing changed. Um, I'm a brand driven, if you have something that's more obscure, I like it. Um, my turntable is um, an original, basically just been made by a guy who's uh, who's been in the industry for, for God knows how long. Um, so he's decided to make his turntables and I got one of the first of those it sounds fantastic uh, the amplifier yeah it's I think it's commonplace um, in America most probably but it's uh, quite new in the UK um, 
and um, it's just back to get road reviews in the magazines um, and my speakers um, they're um, you know, but they're not mainstream. You've got your missions, you've got your cash, you've got your Wharfdales, you know, you've got your BMW, Basel, Wilkins, your mainstream kind of speakers. And it would sound like a snob or a twat, but um, I I do rate them on history and things like that. I've had some mission speakers, I've had some Wharfdale speakers, I've had BMW speakers, and they're all very good. And like Kef, and so I've had multiple Kef speakers. But if I get something with a bit of more of an obscure name, um, like my little Piegas I had, I love them, uh, from Switzerland, um, alloy cases, everything, they were fantastic. Um, I've since upgraded some PMCs, which are a British company, it's more like a boutique brand, but they are sort of spreading everywhere now. Um, and, you know, the review recently was sort of... Uh, possibly the best speaker on a two thousand pounds, so you know that is the same. It's the same with records for me. You know, I'll, if I can get something in a box set or something that's limited, coloured, a bit different, I'll go for it. As a shiny magpie time. Anyway, as you can see, I've had a haircut. The beard's coming back, so do not fret. Um, anyone who's checking out um, my channel for the first time. I've run a contest, there's a 100 subs contest, um, I think I set for it to finish on about the 2nd or the 3rd of December, um, basically, you know, it's hit, hit, hit or miss with the VC, not had many, entr uh, many entries at all, um, so you know, if you want to check out, um, which has a nice, simple, easy to enter contest. Um, what I might do is I might end up um, extending it by a week um, just to see if anybody else uh, wants to have a go and um, see how you get on. But anyway, um, I've rambled on long enough as I do. Um, we Brits love to talk about random. So, nice to see you again, VC. Um, I'll most probably do another video shortly as a few uh, responses I need to do. Um, but yeah, I'll um, obviously post the room tour. I know everyone looks like a good nosy around the room tour um, as soon as I've done it. So long, BC. Cheers.